All right, so the only inconsistency here is this sharp rise when we open the purge. So it looks like it's supposed to go from you know, 13.4, our lowest point, all the way back up to atmosphere. And then when both the purge is closed and the vent valve is open, the pump still runs, then we should go back to our second reference pressure, which is, I assume should be close to the first reference pressure. So let's see what happens if we manually just take this hose off the purge valve. Will that pressure skyrocket in 10 seconds up to atmosphere? And now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It did. So let's put it back on. Let it decay again. And then go to the next step where it pulses the purge solenoid. And see how fast the pressure decays in 10 seconds. So obviously if this is fully open, then the pressure decays very quickly. Within like five seconds it goes to atmosphere. So that might be the cause of this code. You said the purge solenoid with this computer is being pulsed. With the old computer it was just on. Interesting. Take this hose off. Alright, we're at 0.6 psi vacuum, so go on to the next step and see. This should rise very quickly. Seems like it's rising very slowly. Hmm. Is that correct? That's my question. That's the variable. We have this computer. We try putting in the original computer and repeat this test and see if the purge has a bigger duty cycle. We can measure it with the scope. It seems like this purge is kind of, you know, it's clicking, it's working, you would think it's perfect, but maybe it's not enough duty cycle or something like that. I mean, that's a variable. All right, so I have the scope hooked up to the control wire of the purge solenoid. Here's our signal. So battery voltage and the computer's pulling it down the ground. You can see the math channel here, duty cycle is about 70%. So that means it's high 70% of the time and low 30% of the time. So actually it's on 30% duty cycle. So that's our reference when the purge solenoid is commanded on. Is that good enough? I don't know. The only way to check is to reinstall the original engine computer. As the owner said with that one, the perch solenoid is getting just, you know, full open, which maybe this car needs to do a successful check. So something is not adding up here. As we see, when you take the hose off, boom, instant, you know, the canister gets replenished with air very quickly. This, it's clicking, you think 30%, but it's barely, you know, you can't get back up to atmosphere, you can't vent that canister fast enough, and that would be definitely incorrect purge flow. 
Hmm. All right, so replacement engine computer's plugged in. It's setting an immobilizer code, but we can still do key on bidirectional testing. So the, the uh, vacuum pump, the LPD, yep, you can hear it. That works. Now, vent valve, let's try that. I heard it click. You're going to have to take my word for it. What about the purge solenoid? No purge control by this engine computer. How crazy is that? So is the driver failing or failed in the original engine computer. I would not be too surprised because, you know, the guy said it didn't click with this one and it clicks with this one. That's exactly what we see. The only question is, with the reman computer, is it clicking enough? <laughs> is that duty cycle correct? If it's not, we don't have a known good. I, I can try to find a known good Toyota Corolla somewhere and measure this duty cycle on the purge solenoid and if it's significantly more then this engine computer is also junk not correct this is nuts I'm gonna see if I can find another 1.8 you know Toyota Corolla of this generation and uh, do a test on that but without that information um, yeah we're back down to the engine computer. It's that's pretty crazy. Okay, this is nuts. Back on the scope. We're stuck at 6.2 volts. Just stuck there. It's not being pulsed. Doesn't matter if we're off or on. Completely stuck. <laughs> wow. Man, so I guess that original engine computer is cooked. The driver it's somewhere in between. It's pulling down the circuit a little bit, but not, not enough. That kind of blows my mind. What if we unplug this? It should drop to zero. It's in, you know, ground side switched. Yep, it dropped to zero. So. I think it would be open at 6 volts all the time. So in this case the customer did make the right call on replacing the PCM, but is the new PCM pulsing that purge solenoid enough to do enough purge flow? You would think you would have varying commands, not just 30%. I mean that's bidirectional control. but. Man, that's this is this is a tough one. If the first PCM failed with the driver for the purge solenoid, what are the chances that this reman PCM from flagship one is not quite right either? Kind of frustrating. Alright, so just to eliminate the variable between the flow of these two solenoids, this is the original Toyota one. This is the one that the car came in with, the aftermarket, whatever, Duralast. So I reconnected the Duralast here and the system is being pumped down by the leak detection pump and we're at minus 0.65. Let's do the 10 second countdown here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. And it seems to be the same as the, the original unit. We're 
back to this. <sighs> I really don't know what else to do. So the only unknown here is A, we can reinstall the original purge solenoid. I don't think that'll make a difference. The ECM, basically clear the codes, do a drive cycle, park it overnight. If it does its check, it resets these codes. We'll go from there. So this is not a straightforward EVAP diagnosis. So the next morning, the Toyota Corolla sat overnight after one drive cycle. Let's look at the OBD2 readiness monitors and see if this EVAP test passed. So the only thing that I changed since the car came in is reinstalled the OEM Toyota purge solenoid. Place your bets now. Readiness completed, 8. DTCs, 0. Read fault code. No fault code. Ready, 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 ready. EVAP is ready. So that's it. Is this car fixed? <laughs> um, I'll, I'd like to take it for one more drive cycle, but it appears to be happy. So what's the, what's the takeaway here? So the owner went through hell, two years of dealing with this check engine light. You saw the list of parts that was replaced. All of them, except for the ECM, were absolutely unnecessary. The guy before him hacked the harness and actually looked at the harness and the control wire. Oh, the trunk release doesn't work, I guess. Let's see here. So on this wiring harness, you can see this green wire was added. And where was it added to? Well, hey, here's the purge solenoid connector, and it splices into that control wire. Actually, there's two wires, so both of them they hacked. And this goes all the way back to the PCM connector, <laughs> and it's spliced right into, and you see that that's cut off and that's spliced in. So this is this was the only original bad part. The driver in the ECM for the purge solenoid got stuck at 6 volts, purge solenoid is always open, and you have all these problems. This crap, useless. This crap, even though it clicked, even though it held vacuum, apparently the car is not happy about it. That is exactly why I say electrical parts OEM only, no ands, ifs, or buts. You see it over and over again, almost every video with the parts cannon. That's what you get. You you pay it was like almost a hundred bucks for that aftermarket solenoid. And you have to wonder why, you know, once the customer installed the new ECM and he got the purge solenoid clicking, why didn't he reinstall the original Toyota purge solenoid? That's my question. Um, usually, you know, if people ask me to diagnose a car and it's been messed with, I'm like, well, first step, can you just reinstall all the original parts <laughs> if you have them, um, or at least fill your trunk with all the parts that you have replaced, never throw away any part that you take off of a car before the problem is fixed. That's absolutely rule number one. Don't throw anything away until the car is fixed and set down the road. If it's anything original that you take off the car that doesn't fix the problem that you haven't proved is bad, do not throw it away. At least keep it in your trunk. That'll make my job easier and potentially no parts required fix. Just like in this case, the car is happy with its original purge solenoid. It's kind of crazy. Bench testing would not show this. 
needs to be installed on the car it needs to run its own check so that's it for this little Toyota uh, how much would you charge for this so let's see if the car came in with this problem virgin untouched no parts cannon to diagnose the bad driver in the ECM probably an hour you do the bi-directional check hey it's not clicking you scope the uh, control wire and you see why is it stuck at six volts it doesn't make sense bad driver in the in the ECM done here we have to check every single component because everything was replaced the canister the leak detection pump the vent valve check this you know system for uh, for leaks <coughs> check the old ECM versus the new ECM yeah it takes a lot more time so I'm charging for this whole Diag and the test driving and everything three hours I think that's fair and the customer will be happy no more check engine light and uh, that's it so hope you enjoyed that one thanks a lot for watching we'll see you next time bye bye alright a little bonus footage so some people might ask why did the driver in the ECM fail was the output you know the purge solenoid was it getting shorted now uh, was it drawing too much current let's bench test the original solenoid the this is the Toyota OEM unit versus this Duralast replacement I just want to see how many amps they carry so power supply set at 12 volts and it'll show us the current once we plug this sucker in so let's try the Duralast first. It clicked. We got 0 0.5 amps at 12 volts. Okay. So now let's just plug it into the OEM. It clicked. 0 0.5 amps. Maybe a couple milliamps smaller so this solenoid definitely doesn't carry too much current the failure was simply a failed driver in the ECM I guess it happens unfortunately this time it's on a Toyota so yes Scotty Kilmer Toyotas do break <laughs> um, that's it thanks a lot for watching see you next time bye bye